Good morning. Happy Easter. He is risen. And, and this is the part where you're supposed to say, He is risen indeed. Let's try that, shall we? He is risen. He is risen indeed. All right. Well, we're glad you're here. Today is obviously Easter Sunday, April 4th, 2021. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to Christ United Methodist Church. We have just a few announcements this morning. Uh, as we've been saying, uh, we, this, is, this is our month that we are collecting for the community food pantry. Uh, thank you so much for the gift of food and other things that you brought to the, the parking lot service last week. Uh, they are gratefully appreciated. Uh, but we are going to collect all month long. And so if you look in the bulletin, uh, uh, where you can find that online, um, there are, is a list of things. You're not limited to that list, but these are the suggested items. Hand and body soap, laundry detergent, toilet paper, tuna, and packaged meals such as hamburger helper, but not macaroni and cheese. Okay, uh, the other two announcements are, are funeral announcements. Uh, Reverend Chris Martin uh, will be having the funeral for Joanne Werbung. Uh, Saturday, April 10th at 1.30 p.m. at the chapel at Highland Memorial Park. Once again, uh, Reverend Chris Martin is ha will hold the funeral for Joanne Werbung Saturday, April 10th at 1.30 p.m. at the chapel at Highland Memorial Park. The funeral for Nancy Vickers is also on April 10th and at 1 p.m., but it will be here at Christ United Methodist Church. So the funeral for Joanne Werbung and for Nancy Vickers are both on April 10th, but Joanne Werbung is at the Highland Memorial Park, and Nancy Vickers' service is here at Christ United Methodist Church. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, please be watching for details about that. That it concludes our announcements. Let's join together in our call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, His love endures forever. The Lord is my refuge and strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Let's sing together. Christ the Lord is risen today. And following that, we'll, our choir will sing an anthem, Let Alleluia's Fill the Sky. Right now, let's sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh. 
God's redeeming work is done. Alleluia. But a fight, a battle won. Alleluia. Death in vain for his in Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, you overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection may, by the renewing of your spirit, 
rise from the death of sin to the life of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are three months early. Three months from today, July 4th, is our nation's birthday and a grand celebration of freedom and independence. And in that sense, our celebration today on April 4th is three months early. But our celebration today is the celebration of a freedom that is far grander, far more amazing than our independence from King George and the nation of England. The freedom that we celebrate today has been the subject of our sermons and messages for the last seven and a half weeks. And even then, we've barely scratched the surface of why our remembrance of this day is the cause of so much joy, gladness, and celebration. But make no mistake, like the celebration of July 4th for the citizens of the United States of America, the Easter celebration for the citizens of the kingdom of God and of Jesus Christ is a celebration of freedom. I'm going to briefly recap the last seven weeks and remind you of a few of the freedoms that we are celebrating in a little while. But, but first, I want to read the words of Mark chapter 16 and add to our remembrance of the story of Easter that our youth began this morning in our sunrise service. Mark chapter 16 says, When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. Don't, don't be afraid. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they have laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and they, they fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. As the two Marys and Salome walked to the tomb, they, they were worried. They were worried about what Jesus' body would smell like. They were worried that the stone was too large for the three of them to move. They were worried that it, there might not be anyone there to help them move it. They, they were worried that the Roman soldiers or whomever was guarding the tomb would refuse to help them or even refuse to allow them to rewrap Jesus' body with the spices and incense and aromatic uh, tree sap or whatever they had brought with them. But upon their arrival, 
the 2,000 pound stone had already been moved. And then they began to worry why it had been moved. But, but when they, they entered the tomb to look inside, instead of finding Jesus, they found a messenger of God whose first words to them were, don't be afraid. But after he had given them instructions and sent them on their way, they were still trembling, confused, and afraid. But that initial reaction changed as they met Jesus face to face when they realized that Jesus was alive. As time passed, they they began to understand the things that Jesus had taught them, including the things about death, burial, and resurrection. All those things that had always been confusing suddenly began to make sense. They began to understand everything that they had seen and everything that had happened. Uh, They understood that, that everything that happened during Holy Week happened exactly the way that Jesus said that it would happen. And exactly as the ancient prophets had described in the Scriptures hundreds of years earlier. And by the time that Peter stays in the home of a Roman centurion named Cornelius in Caesarea, Peter had had also been processing these lessons. And Peter had had processed the lessons that he learned from Jesus in in an even deeper way by that time. We read that story in Acts chapter 10, where it says, Peter began to speak. He said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We are are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Peter realized that Jesus' fulfillment of the prophecies of the Old Testament had begun something entirely new and changed the way that God's people would engage with the world around them and change the way, uh, change their entire relationship with God. The new covenant, this new contract with God was was a contract without favoritism. 
without nepotism, without racism, and without judgment except for the judgment of the one person who understood us best, who was perfect, just, and infinitely wise. And just a few decades after Peter, Paul, having learned from the disciples as well as through his own experience in meeting Jesus and, and having, having had even more time to, to process what he had learned and seen and heard, Paul writes to the church in Corinth to help them to understand what the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus meant to them and still means to each one of us. This comes from Paul's letter, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Paul says, Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas. Now, remember, Cephas is is a, a, the same name as Peter, where he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace to me was not without effect. No, no, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you have believed. Paul reminds us that it was, it was by this gospel, this story of life, death, and resurrection through which we were saved if we hold firmly to what we have learned and believed. Paul knows, that his, Paul knows what his life was like before he met Jesus. Paul knows that, that he is utterly undeserving of God's rescue, let alone the honor of being counted among the disciples of Jesus Christ. Paul remembers that he had been so anti-Jesus that he had become known as the hunter of Christ followers. The, he had become known as the man who, who had the followers of Jesus arrested and tortured and, and worse. And because he was who he was, and because of the life that he once lived, Paul understands the depth of God's mercy and grace. Through the story of Easter, through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, Paul had found freedom. And that freedom 
has flowed down through history to us. It is a freedom that is far grander than anything we celebrate on July 4th. It is more than our freedom from King George and the nation of England. It's more than the freedoms enumerated in the Constitution of the United States and the Bill of Rights. The message of the gospel is a message of many freedoms. Mary and Mary and Salome learned that it is a message of freedom from fear. Peter learned that it was a message of freedom from favoritism, nepotism, racism, and nationalism. Paul learned that it is a message of mercy, grace, and freedom from our past. And as we've learned over the last seven and a half weeks... It's a message of freedom from corruption, rescue from the flood, freedom from the law of Moses, freedom from the demands of other gods, a message of keeping God at the center of our lives, freedom from the misplaced priorities and wisdom of the world, freedom from our failures, freedom from our guilt, Freedom from suffering, freedom from sin, and even freedom from death. And that is why we repeat this story year after year, and why Easter should be filled with joy. The message of Easter was a story about freedom long before the events of the Revolutionary War, And long before July 4th had any meaning at all to the citizens of North America. We celebrate Easter today because today is the day when God gave us the immeasurable gift of freedom. Happy Easter, everyone. We have contained in our our bulletin our list of of prayer requests. This this week's person of the week is Betty Coleman. Uh, As always, I encourage you to to take out a note card or or just a pad of paper or, I don't know, a post-it note, something. But write down a note of encouragement to Betty and let her know that we are thinking of her. Also, Uh, Prayer requests for Viola Lip, Andy Magda, who who I saw this week and who seems to be be recovering fairly well. Uh, Prayers for Craig Sheets, Timothy Walters, Mike Freshwater, Connie Woodson, Bridget McNulty, Becca Gross, Heather Henline, Craig, George, Terry Wamsley, Jacqueline Antolucci, Drew Schuster, Brandon Hookway, and Amanda Montgomery. Also, as we noted earlier, uh, uh, prayers are lifted up for the family and friends of Nancy Vickers and Joanne Werbung. Uh, Nancy Vickers passed away March 28th. Uh, Joanne earlier, but the funerals for both of those families are this week. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we give thanks for all the ways that you bless us every day. We give thanks for the freedoms that we have as citizens of the United States of America. We give thanks for the freedoms that are enumerated in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. But more than that, on this day, we give thanks 
for the mercy and the grace and the love that we have received from you and the, and the, the miracle and the gift that we have received on Easter. Freedom from sin and death. We lift up to you all of those names that we have shared. For, for Betty Coleman, our person of the week. And we also pray for Viola, Andy, Craig, Timothy, Mike, Connie, Bridget, Becca, Heather, Craig, Terry, Jacqueline, Drew, Brandon, and Amanda. We pray that you would be with them as they, they come and go to doctor's appointments and, and, and other things. We pray that you would walk with them and give them uh, courage and strength and stamina and wisdom and understanding as they visit doctors and, and go through the process of getting better. But we pray that you would be at work doing the things that doctors and nurses and, and physical therapists and, and, and all those folks just can't do. We pray you would pour out healing and hope and courage all the things that they're going to need to make it through each day, we pray that you would be present in their lives and, and help them to move towards healing and wholeness. We pray for the family of, and friends of Nancy Vickers, who passed away March 28th. And we pray for the family and friends of Joanne Werbung, whose funeral is also uh, coming up on the 10th. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for all the gifts you have given to us, especially for this joyful day of Easter. We give thanks for your Son, Jesus, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we move on to our closing hymn, I want to say at one time, be prepared. You know what you're supposed to do. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Happy Easter, everyone. Uh, I hope that you will remember the messages that we have shared together during the season of Lent and, and, and today, this season of Easter, uh, a season of joy, as we remember the gifts that God has given to us, the amazing gifts of freedom that we have received not on July 4th, but this year on April 4th. Let's sing together. Up from the grave he arose. Happy Easter, everyone. Yeah.
Saints to reign. 